thank God for the first Sunday of a brand new year. It's a blessing to be able to live to see another year come in. We pray that we'll be able to see it go out also. responsibility as a child of God. It's a foundation, solid foundation. It tells you about a whole lot of things in it. And the only thing I ever remember when I was coming up about the book of Hebrews was that one particular scripture. Uh, they quoted all the time where I was growing up, when I was growing up, about holiness. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's the only book I really realized about, or could, could just put my hands around about that particular book. Amen. Because uh, it was said so much, and you hear something so much, I mean, faith does come Amen. from what you hear. Is that right? Amen. Amen. And, uh, that scripture really did something to me. Now I'm reading out a, a different book and it says in the 14th verse of that 12th chapter, it says, pursue peace with all men or follow peace with all men. That's the old 
uh, the King James Version, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no man will see the Lord. And they just rang that out. That's yeah. one scripture they rung, rung out all the time. It's all right. Follow peace with all men. Hold us out. No man shall see the Lord. And that's what it amounts to in a nutshell. Amen. Follow peace with all men. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, in doing that, thank you, uh, when you follow peace with all men, you treat people right. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord. And that was Jesus' job when he came into this world oh, a long time ago in a bodily form. Amen? Amen. And uh, that he wanted to bring peace back into this land that we were in to bring us back into the fold of God. Amen. Because man has been so far apart that he needed some help. Praise the Lord. And he asked God to prepare him a body to go down and bring man back together with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in doing that, He wanted to become like us to see how we felt, how we lived, so that we could be like him. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good news, isn't it? Amen. And that second chapter, where first to the 18th verse deals with that, the sacrifice. And I'm, I'm reading a little bit from uh, a guy named uh, John Maxwell. He's a guy that I like reading some of his material. Amen. He left it open for us to partake of it, and I, I partake of it. I had a good meal from it, and I want to share a little bit with you today. And the Bible, praise the Lord. He always wraps it up in the Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because we need to know that Jesus became like us. For a reason. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. In this life which we live in, there are a lot of people that we come in contact <coughs> with and we admire. Is that right? Amen. And you know, we should have a mentor. Amen. Now the mentor should not be on our same level. Is that right? Amen. A mentor is one who should be a couple steps above us. He's mentoring us that he has knowledge that we don't have yet. Or he's experienced something that we haven't experienced yet. And we're trying to receive what he has. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that. You never try to step up or go to another level if someone is at the same level you're at. Amen. And some people are at different levels at any given time. Some people do not want to reach out to uh, expand themselves. They are comfortable where they're at. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, they call that complacency. Is that right? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But as we look at the lesson today, we're going to find out about Jesus. Praise the Lord. And getting back to that mentor, praise the Lord. If he's a good mentor, he will stretch you and he'll kind of make you upset at times. Because he's going to get you out of your stalemate condition. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you can move on up a little higher. Amen. In the uh, athletic uh, field, uh, basketball or football, I uh, follow some of these characters and plus listen to my sons talk about those individuals. They have people on their team called captains. 
Some of them are very ruthless, but they're very successful in what they're doing. And they see the potential in an individual, and that individual don't want to go to a different level, but he wants to stay complacent, but they don't want him to stay complacent because they've got a team effort to win some games. Is that right? Amen. And some of those guys will fall out with each other. The guy isn't trying to do but press them, push them up a little bit higher. Some will understand, others won't. They say, get trained me. I don't like the way he's dogging me. Praise the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. But then others will move on up a little bit higher. And they'll find out what this individual is trying to tell them is true, and they'll begin to blossom. Amen? Amen. They'll begin to step on up a little bit higher. But in the lesson today, uh, we're talking about in the second chapter. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It reads like this. Therefore, we must give the most earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through the angels prove steadfast, every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward. How shall we escape we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness with both signs and wonder with various miracles and gifts and of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou taketh care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor, and set him over the works of your hands. We have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was the made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of the death and crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, for him are all things, and by whom all things, in bringing man, many sons to the glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he who sanctified and those who are being sanctified are all one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call him brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will sing praises to you again. And I will put my trust in him again. Herein I am the, I, I am, am I the children whom God has given me. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of the flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, <coughs> that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For in, indeed he does not give aid to the angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful and the high priest in things pertaining to God, to make perpetuation for uh, the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. That's good news. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. In all that, he's able to aid us. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. To aid us. As I said, this book of Hebrews is a good book and has a solid foundation for us to go by. Amen. And if you notice that as we look through that book, we find out about faith and how Jesus uh, and how Jesus was involved with faith and how the men and women of old were in faith. They relied upon God. Amen. And that's the bottom line of Jesus coming into this world was to reconcile us back together with God and to bridge the gap and to become like us so he could know exactly what we went through so he could have some empathy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then go back to heaven and be our mediator. Praise Amen. Isn't that, isn't that good? Praise yeah. him. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I uh, was looking at, uh, I'll get to all this. Praise the Lord. Let me take my time here. I've got a few all minutes. Right. They had some clips about an individual who was a millionaire. And the millionaire, you know, sometimes when you have companies, you lose sight of what your workers are going through. Is that right? Amen. And uh, every now and then, not too often, but some of the leaders of the companies will go back where they started from and go back into the company. And uh, they begin to, especially they have more than one company, they'll come back as a worker and we'll let nobody know that they're there. And they'll see what's going on when on the people. Now this, that's a good leader. Amen. You don't find too much of that anymore. That's right. That's right. Second hand is all right, but it's not the real thing. Mm -hmm. You want a first hand report. That's right. Somebody said, I can't be that way. It's up to you. You can do anything you want to do. Amen. Hey Amen. People said, I can't do You can do anything right. you want to do. That's right. You can make time for anything you want. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it. I can recall back in my own life that there's some things I wanted to do that I didn't get to do and those are going on. I could have done that but it was not a high priority. But getting back to this leader, this business person, this owner of the company, this one individual made it his priority to go back into some of his companies because he didn't want nothing to fail. He didn't want it to fail. So he made a uh, a, a goal in his own life to go back and see what's happening in his company. And so, and so he went back and began to work with them and they began to talk. You know, people begin to talk when you are one of them. Mm -hmm. begin to, they begin to open up. That's right. I, mean, I was at a company one time and they said, so-and-so is coming today. And he come in his, his uh, white shirt and his tie and he had some suspenders on. And they said, yeah. He looked at him like that because of some of the things he implemented was not too conducive to the people. But you don't have to make an announcement about who you are. That's right. You ought to know who you are before you even come back. Amen. Amen. You shouldn't fear others when you're doing things anyway. Is that right? Amen. There's room and opportunity for everybody. That's right. You got to grow in that. You know that? You got to be comfortable in your own skin. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this individual went to this company and he went back there and began to do what they was doing, and they began to tell him a whole lot. And then he zoomed in out. He didn't tell him who he was. Came on back in his own position and began to implement things differently. He was not a tax master as things have <laughs> things were before. Praise the Lord. And Jesus was just like that. He did not. Was not a tax master. Amen. He knew he was on a mission. And he began to fulfill that mission. Let's look at the scriptures again, praise the Lord, because I got to look at the scriptures. Someone called me an application preacher years ago. Amen. That's all right. It says here, let's say it here again. It said, therefore, we must give the most earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Now, in this brand new year, I use this subject today about 
Jesus became like us so that we could become like him. We heard these messages before. But if we don't continue to hear these things, we might drift away. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And I don't want to drift away because I want to keep intact what I've heard before and build on it. Amen. Block by block by Amen. block. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise him. So that I can get what I want from God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The author makes an argument from the less, the least lesser to the greater. If then the lesser situation of the Old Testament are people who rejected God's word as delivered by the angels were severely punished. You see, some people back in the old days, they received the message from angels, amen, to deliver God's word. Amen. Sometimes they did that. Amen, praise the Lord. But we're not there anymore. Amen. The angels don't have to come down and talk That's to us. Right. We got the word. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're under a new dispensation. We're living by faith. Amen. We're taking God at his word. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Much more greater the punishment would be, will be for those who now reject the word of salvation that has been delivered by the Son himself and confirmed by the Holy Spirit. If you got the Son and you got the Holy Spirit, you need to do the Word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. His whole purpose is coming here to show us the Word. Teach us the Word. Amen. He was the walking Word. Amen. According to John, it says, he was flesh, he became flesh. Is that right? Amen. In John, praise the Lord. Is that right? Amen. Well, let's go back and check John out. We don't want to take nothing for granted. Praise the Lord. Amen. My job today is to talk about this Jesus became. He became like us. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And all things was made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him was life. And the light was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man named, sent from God whose name was John. Stick right there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus became flesh. Jesus became flesh. The Word became flesh to show us how to live for God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says here, praise the Lord. It says here, listen to what it says here, praise the Lord. It says, and uh, the, if the Word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. The truth we have heard is a message of salvation delivered through Christ. Dripped away pictures a ship greater getting off course. Here it speaks of getting off track Scripture due to not listening very carefully to good, the good news. And it's easy to get off track. Amen. A ship. To get off track. Now there was a ship years ago. I don't know what happened. But I knew there was something that would happen. The captain was doing some things he wasn't supposed to do. And the ship messed up. And when the ship started sinking, he began to get off board too. And the last one on the ship, he was supposed to be the last one on the ship. Is that right? Amen. I ain't going to say no more about that situation. But he was the last one, supposed to be the last one on the ship. The captain of the ship was supposed to stay there when the ship goes down. He was one of the first ones to get off of the ship. He was doing some things he wasn't supposed to be doing. Praise the Lord. But Jesus was not like that. 
Praise the Lord. Jesus always and always is the captain of the ship. Amen. Amen. He will be there when no one else. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because he believes in himself. He believes in who he was and who he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says here, look what it says here, if the word spoken through the angels approve steadfast and ever transgression and the disobedient receive a just reward, how shall we escape? If we don't like so great stuff, we don't need to ignore the word of God. According to the Jewish tradition, the message of God delivered, the law given on the Mount Sinai, you can find this in Acts 2nd chapter, the 7th chapter 38 and Galatians 3 and 19, was delivered through the angels, violation of the law. We punish, <coughs> praise the Lord. And the punishment was inescapable, praise the Lord. So what makes us think we can escape? Here the author repress that full of force of the danger of turning away from God and his salvation. This is no escape from punishment for those who walk away from the punishment and will be uh, of the greatest severity, praise the Lord. Salvation refers to God's act on behalf of his people. For example, God saved his people through the exodus from Genesis, or uh, Exodus, praise the Lord. Jesus became like us. He showed us how to live for God down here. Amen. And if you go back to the uh, Matthews, the fifth chapter, it talks about, he talks about being blessed. Uh, praise the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit and et cetera, et cetera. You remember that particular scripture? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He wants to show us, praise the Lord, and they call that the beatitude. <coughs> praise the Lord. He wants to show us in this particular book how to treat people. Amen, praise the Lord. Jesus said, Verily I said unto them, Verily I say unto you that the Son of Man can do nothing of himself. Praise the Lord. But what he sees the Father doeth, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. See, Jesus was mimicking the Father. Is that right? Amen. Amen. He mimicked the Father, praise the Lord. And in mimicking the Father, he could tell you what God was requiring. That's Matthews, praise the Lord. I was in John. Praise the Lord. Matthews, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because in mimicking the Father, you know, something about when you see things that your Father do, you try to implement them. Amen. It's like my kids. They do the same thing. Without them realizing they do some yeah. same things, they some of the same things that I say. And Jesus said, one case when you see me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in the, in the book of the Matthew, the fifth chapter, he talks about this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. He's trying to say those who are poor in spirit. Praise the Lord. Not trying to say, he's saying. Those are the poor in spirit. It says, therefore, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. We get back to Hebrews in a minute, but I want to go to John, praise the Lord, because we're going to try to break this down about Jesus became flesh. See, Jesus was an example for us. Amen. And he has to be an example in order for you to follow him. Amen. Amen. In this world that we live in, we've got to have examples. That's right. We got to have people that we can look up to. Amen. We ain't got too many people nowadays we can look up to. Everybody trying to be like their grandpa, grandma's trying to be like their daughters. That's right. Fathers trying to be like the sons. Nobody want to be who they are. Amen. You done lived your life as a young person. Now you live your life as a person to be able to teach others. Amen. Amen. Right. Grandma's dressed in miniskirts. Fathers trying to dress like the young the young men. And they say, I heard one guy say one time, I don't feel no different than I feel when I was 19. You, something's wrong with you, my friend. You 65 or 7 years old and you said you feel like you 19. Uh, I gotta say, were you either deaf, dumb, dumb, blind, or dishonest? 
Amen. Praise the Lord. But Jesus was not that way. Praise the Lord. The Bible says here in this particular book here, the Beatitudes, that Jesus says, uh, uh, listen to what it says. God bless those who are poor and realize their need for him. Now, let me stick a pin in here, praise the Lord, because i got to get this out, praise the Lord. Because just because you're poor don't mean you're going to be blessed of God. Amen. And you're not going to make it in because you're poor. poor. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen, because you've got a lot of poor folk going to bust hell wide open. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it says here, look what it says here. God bless those who are poor. I'm reading out of the uh, NLT Bibles. Praise the Lord. It says, God bless those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of God is theirs. Praise the Lord. Amen. The poor and and realize their need for that literally is talking about in in this particular book. Poor are often despised as the, ex, especially poised because oppression by their wealthy, leading them to trust in the Lord for salvation and deliverance rather than relying on the power of wealth. Now a lot of poor folk they start praying more when they get taxed by those who tax them. Is that right? Amen. Now you got some people that are poor that do not care. Amen. At all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is going to be a long series. I see it right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to try to do some more here. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you see, because you're poor does not mean that you are going to make it in and that you are going to stick with God. Because I encounter a lot of people that are poor. And they got the biggest raggedy mouth that there is. Amen. People call them potty mouths. I don't know where they got that in potty mouths. Amen. Praise the Lord. But Jesus come down for that potty mouth. Jesus became flesh to take care of the potty mouths. Is that, is that right? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it says here, praise the Lord, it says here, because you're poor, you know, he's talking about in this aspect, he's talking about the poor that have been depressed by those who are wealthy. Now let's stick another pen in because your wealth don't mean you're gonna oppress the poor. Amen. But there's a lot of people that are in position that do oppress the poor. That's right. But then you gotta learn how to react <coughs> when they're trying to oppress you. That's right. You don't like what's going on, move on. Go somewhere else. You don't have to stick with that. I know an individual right now who retired. We talked about that a little bit today. This woman today. Before she left for retirement, she was all broken up, had back trouble, heart problems. She was everything. She's going out on disability. And she went out on disability. Now I, I watch her go down the street. She's going to retire from this place where she's at. It doesn't look like the same person. It does not look like the same person. All the taxation that she had encountered while she was on that particular job, she's free. Amen. She's free. And she said, told me she was a Christian too. Under the taxation of those particular people. When she got out of that, this woman is driving more, walking better, looking better, everything. Like she's got a new lease on life. If I would say her name, you would understand who it is. This is real stuff, praise the Lord. So this particular trip is talking about her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because she got out of the taxation of this mess, she's free. Praise she's foot loose and fancy free. Praise the Lord. I, I, I point her out every time to my wife, I said, there she goes. Amen. She's like the gold trotter. Praise the Lord. She drives around more town, town now than she did before. One night I had to go and help her up the steps to get out to her car. That's how in bad shape she was. No, that woman does not need any help at all. Well. The Bible says in praise the Lord, it says, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For theirs the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God bless those who are mourned, for they will be comforted. Jesus showed them how to be blessed. Amen. You see, 
because Jesus was Jesus, when he came down here, he had to go and experience some of the elements that we experience in order to become like us. Amen. He had to experience the pain of being ridiculed and talked about, name put out on the street. They was no good. He was around wine bibbers and all the, the characters, the loose characters. But he became like us so he could do something. Amen. Now some people become like you and don't do a thing. Amen. Amen, praise the Lord. They become like you. When they see you drink, they'll drink. When they see you curse, they'll curse. Whatever it is, you'll become like them and you won't be able to lead them to Christ. They lead you to, Christ, to themselves. But in this year of 2013, we've got to take a stand Amen. and become like Christ, Amen. not be like somebody else. Amen. Amen, praise the Lord. Because you're going to be confronted with people in this year that are going to try to persuade you to be like them. If you don't have the fortitude and the God on your side and a foundation, you won't be like them. yourself. You'll be like them. Amen. Hey, come on, stick on my take on Hey, stick on my take on my. You gotta learn to take your stand. Amen. And Jesus was just like was just like that. He wanted to show us that you be can you can become like me. Amen. Amen. Praise him. The Bible says, "Oh, praise the Lord." It says, uh, mm, "Thank you, Jesus." Therefore, we must give the earnest heed to the things we have heard. Praise the Lord, lest we forget. Christian people forget so easily. Amen. Get caught up in that realm of being like their peers. Uh -huh. And no one knows whether they are a Christian or not. That's right. Amen, praise the Lord. They become like a little, they got a little glass, a little, they got a little ring they put on their finger, and it has a mood swing. You know, have you ever seen that thing? Amen. You become like whatever it is you're around. Amen, praise the Lord. I don't mean you must be super spiritual. I'm not super spiritual. You don't hear me say thus, thou, and all this, brother so-and-so. Have you ever heard me say that? Praise the Lord. That, that's just a formality, praise the Lord. But in your heart, you got to be right. Amen. Amen. Showtime is over. In 2013, showtime is over. Amen. You gotta be like God. Amen. Amen. People talk about I want to be like Mike. No, I don't want to be like Mike. I don't want to be like George. All right. I want to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't want to be super spiritual all the time. Every time you look up, you praying. You can't do nothing for God. They won't know how to take you. I used to go to a person place where an individual, all she was prayed all the time. You come on to visit and she prayed. How you doing now? Now. I like to help. She missed a blessing trying to pray. There's a time and a season for everything. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Amen. There is a time and a season for everything. Amen. You got to know how to do it right in 2013. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, listen, therefore we must give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we forgive or where we drift away. You got to know there's a time and season for everything. Amen. There's a time to pray, a time to speak, a time to talk, a time to laugh, Amen. and a time to dance. That's right. Amen. But the Bible says that Jesus said here, said, Blessed are those. God bless those who mourn, for they will be comforted. See, he's letting you know, I, I can feel your pain. Why could Jesus feel their pain? Because he became like them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says here, God bless those who are humble. He became humble. He didn't have to, hey, some people when they're wealthy, they don't, they don't want to. They're not accepting nothing else. We experienced that over the course of a few months ago, praise the Lord. Some people who are privileged, they don't want to be like you. Mm -hmm. And they'll let you know, I'm not like you. Amen, praise the Lord. But thank God Jesus was not that away. Amen. When you hurt, he hurts. 
Amen, Prince Lord. When you have problems, he, he's, he's acquainted with your sorrow. Amen. With your grief, your anxiety. Amen. The Bible says in the book of uh, Isaiah, who hath believed our report? You remember that? Amen. Who hath believed our report? I like that, Prince Lord. Who hath believed our report? See, I'm going to hear a lot of scriptures, Prince Lord. Who hath believed your report? Amen. They didn't want to be identified with him because he looked kind of different. He was ugly. Praise the Lord. That's what the Bible says in, the, in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. It says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before him as a, a tender plant, a root out of dry ground. He had no form of commonness. When we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire in him. He was despised, rejected of men. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid as if it were our face from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Praise the Lord. This man, Jesus, he was not a good looking fella. And we get caught up in looks, praise the Lord. You came, Jim was talking about the day how Paul was not an eloquent speaker. It doesn't make no difference how eloquent you are. As long as you got a word. Amen. Lord, give us the word. Yes, In 2013, give us the word. Give us the word. To set our lives free. Yes, Lord. To set our hearts free. Yes, Lord. To be able to go through this year successfully. And knowing that God's got our back. Yes, Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That we know that God will take care of us in this year. Praise the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. He'll take care of our kids. Yes, Lord. He'll take care of our family. Yeah, Lord. He'll take care of our jobs. He'll take care of our home in 2013. Yes, Lord. This is what he says again. God says, bless those who hunger and thirst for righteousness or justice. They will be satisfied. God will take care of us. Yes, no matter what people are trying to do to us right now, God's still going to take care of us. You know that? God will take care of you. No matter what kind of ploy is made, what a paradigm they've got going on, God's going to take care of you. Amen, praise the Lord. He, if he got to create something, he'll create something. to take care of me. If you don't appreciate that, I'm saying for me. i got to talk to me. God will take care of me. In this year, 2013, I don't care how he's going to do it. Don't think, don't care how he does it. Just know he does it. Yes, Lord. I know it'll be all right. Praise the Lord. Can someone say praise the Lord? Praise Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to what it says here. Praise the Lord. It says, blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You got to have merciful people. Amen. Because Jesus was merciful. Amen. We're going to be talking about how Jesus, how he did things, how he was moved with compassion. We got to do the same thing. We got to learn the traits and the MO of Jesus Christ, Amen. the motive of operation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And in doing that, we got some keys to unlock Amen. in our behalf. Yes. Amen. Then I like what he says. I always do those things that please my always. Father. Always. I always do those things that please my Father. I became like you so you can become like me. Yes. He had a wealth of information Amen. to offer you and I. And when we learn more about Jesus Christ, we'll have a wealth of information to help somebody else. Amen. Because the Bible says, Mark the what? Perfect man. And what? Behold the upright, for the end of that man's way is what? Peace. The way of peace. The whole key to the whole message is this. I want to become like him. He became like me. I want to become like him so I can help others. Amen. But that's our whole job down there is to help others. Amen. It's not to just to get saved and go on to heaven. That's right. Amen, praise the Lord. It's to get saved and help others. Amen. Help others. You don't have to just help with money. That's right. Because a lot of people got money, but they need some help spiritually speaking. Amen. They're, home. They're longing and thirsting at the righteousness. Amen. And they want to be fed. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. Ten people may come your way this, this, this month, this week. And need some help. Amen. Spiritually speaking. Not materially speaking, but spiritually speaking. 
you got to be ready. Lord, what thus said the Lord? What do you want me to talk to you about? And if you got the word in your heart, God will begin to talk to you as you talk to them. And you begin to help them. I'm here to tell you that people are hurting this year even more so. They've trusted everybody around them, and everybody around them has failed. But they need somebody to talk to them. Not to condemn them, but to talk to them. Amen. Give them a hand up. Tell them that you're all right, you're going to make it. I got a word for you today. You know, God said something like this. God said, you know, he loves you. And that word, he loves you, can turn things around. Becoming like Jesus. Jesus went about doing good. Talking to people. And tell them, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which persecute for righteous sake. There is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you. Rejoice, be exceeding glad, great is your reward in heaven. Words, 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 words change things. You know that? A word from God can change your life forever. A word. Talk to God, let God deal with you. to close but not from the conclusion of this word Jesus became like us so we could become like him Lord let us finish this word and let us deliver the way you want us to deliver it break it down praise the Lord so those that hear the word will be able to receive from it and be better in the name of Jesus Father we thank you for this day we thank you for